All right, now that uh, braces are back on the menu, boys, let's do a 11 and a half inch barrel velocity test. So, uh, I'm out here tested a bunch of crap, so sorry, it's a giant mess. I've already done a velocity test on various ammo types of 55 grain, 5.56 and 223, kind of show you why, why one, you should mostly pick 5.56 if you're going to buy the 55 grain, but specifically the M193. If you're not buying an M193 bullet or a clone or whatever, you're probably getting less velocity than you think you are. And that velocity, as I discussed in my other video, matters a lot when it comes to shooting distance, because with a 16 inch gun, I think on average, velocity wise, that bullet would have tumbled and fragmented reliably somewhere between 200 and 250 yards if you bought like the Winchester M193 versus all the other stuff. Again, I don't remember specifics, but it was like 100 to 150 yards, somewhere in there. Could be off, but I wanna see what the velocities are out of 11 and a half inch barrel. So if you are stuck shooting 55 grain, uh, one, you can see which ammo uh, has the highest velocity, so to stock up on. Two, I want to get a good chronograph or a uh, a good you know feet per second for each of these, so I can calculate in a ballistics calculator at what distance the round would no longer reliably fragment and tumble. So that's what this is about. This is mainly for my curiosity, but it's kind of a follow up to the uh, the previous one, and it might be helpful to y'all. It might just be a waste of time. I don't know if you just like listening to something in the background while you're at work. Here you go. All right, so first up is gonna be the Winchester 223. This is 55 grain stuff. Full metal jacket. It's labeled as target ammo. And it is, the velocity is listed as 3,240. 3, so 3,240 feet per second. I'm gonna fire three rounds. And I'll tell you what each velocity is. As I fire it, I have my chronograph roughly five yards in front of me. But again, this is just gonna, you know, tell me what I'm interested in. I will also fire a 77 grain OTM that's made by AAC and a 75 grain uh, match round by AAC as well, just to kind of see what velocities you get out of that. So I don't like short barrel ARs, but I understand if you do why you do, uh, they are significantly handier in CQB or indoors. So, I mean, if it's a home defense gun, then yeah, you'd probably be fine with a short barrel. But if you plan on shooting at distance, just know with 55 grain, this is not going to do well, most likely. All right, let's fire one. I forgot how loud this gun is. All right, so 2838. That one was 28. 29 that one was 2818 if i remember correctly that stuff was actually fairly hot again it's been a while i'll have to go back and look at my notes from the previous video oh next up i think yeah so next up is tula steel case fire three rounds of that and if i remember correctly as well this actually had respectable velocities considering it's 223 and target ammo and steel case but we'll see forgot how loud this gun is noticeable difference in uh sound all right that one is 2775 so slower Twenty six forty. That was significantly slower. Twenty six ninety two. Let's fire two more because that first one. I don't know what was up with that. I don't know if that was just the barrel getting refouled by the crappy ammo or what. It's just all over the place. No wonder this stuff isn't accurate. All right, so that's twenty seven sixty. And that one was 2753 so it's just inconsistent so that would explain why that stuff is inaccurate all right this is some old perfecta 223s brass case stuff this is the last of this ammo very sad 
Uh, if I remember correctly, it wasn't uh, super consistent either. But it made good range ammo, and I shot most of it at a Chris Costco rifle class. So I was glad to have it because I found it cheap. All right, Perfecta 223. 2751. 26, so that's 2652. Okay, that one, hopefully the sound isn't cutting out, but that one was 2748. So that one was still inconsistent, but I don't know. The velocities are not significantly lower. If I remember correctly, I think most of them were around 2,900 feet per second out of the 16 inch barrel. Could be wrong, but pretty sure I got an extra 150 feet per second. All right, so this stuff is the Winchester M193. So this stuff should be hotter. Again, Winchester M193, this stuff again, performed well. This was my favorite out of all the 55 grain in my previous test. All right, so that one, there's a bunch of hawks everywhere. So that one was 2861. And if I'm talking a little bit before I tell you the chronograph, it's because my camera usually cuts out sound from the gun blast and it takes it a few seconds to hear me. So hopefully you can hear everything. That was consistent. 2862. Twenty-eight thirty-two. So I think that did the best so far, which doesn't surprise me. All uh, right, what was this crap? Let's see. This stuff is all right. This is the Wolf two two three brass case stuff. I don't even know if they import this anymore since the whole Russia sanctions and everything. Although I think it was made in Taiwan. I don't know. Taiwan's pretty freaked out right now about being invaded. So I. Don't think they're importing ammo. All right. 2781. Okay, that one was a little bit higher. It was 2817. That one was 2779. All right, so that stuff did decent. That's just some random steel case. All right, uh, let's shoot a little bit of green tip. Actually, I take that back. I'll shoot green tip, but I have some PMC x tac as well, right over here. Just drip off three rounds. I'm using this mag because it's shorter and so it doesn't get in the way when I'm bench rested. Not because I care what YouTube thinks. But technically these are only 10 round uh, mags if you load the right caliber in them. If my channel gets banned and I don't care enough to restart it. All right, so again, this is PMC, PMC X-Tac. 55 grain stuff, 2739. All right, that one was 2817. Yeah. And the last, <laughs> that one was 2718. So that would explain why that one wasn't the most, that ammo wasn't the most accurate. It's not loaded very consistently. I mean, it's, it's that's a hundred feet per second difference. That's That's significant. All right, uh, let's shoot some green tip. Again, just green tip. Don't know who makes it. Uh, I think Federal, maybe. No, it's made in Lake City, so. Don't know who owned the plant. I bought this stuff back pre-COVID. <laughs> 2776. So again, the 62 grain stuff is heavier and it has a steel penetrator in it, and it's moving about the same speed as all the other ones, but 2776. All right, that one's a little bit slower. It's 2731. All 
right, that one was 27.44. All right, let's keep moving up in weight. 75 grain AAC match stuff. And again, I don't remember what the velocities were on all these out of my longer barrel. I'll have to look and see for the video. And this is basically all the cheapest ammo I've ever found over the years. I don't buy expensive ammo generally. I, the only expensive ammo I bought was a Spear Gold Dot. It's like 62 grain, I think, soft point rounds or something. And I use those basically for my home defense stuff or my truck gun whenever this was in my truck. So, yes, your vehicle is not a holster. Um, if you keep a gun in your vehicle, you should lock it up somehow. I don't know how you could run like a cable lock through both receivers, you know, and lock it to something. Someone can still steal it if they want to, but don't make it easy for them. All right, that stuff was significantly slower. All right, 24.75. More consistent though. This would explain why this stuff is accurate in my other gun. 24.70. All right, that one, uh, about 30 feet per second difference. So it was 2441. So that stuff is actually pretty accurate in all the guns I've shot so far. It actually, I think, shoots the best out of all the AAC stuff. I don't know if there's a significant, uh, significant performance difference between the 77 grain and that stuff. This they don't label as match. That they do. I don't know. We'll see what the velocity difference is. Maybe it's a lower velocity and that helps. I, I don't know. And I, based on performance, what I've seen, this stuff actually, since it's more accurate, as long as the velocity is the same as the 77 grain or pretty darn close, it might be a better ammo to stock up on, but everything's going to be dependent on your gun. All right, so that was that. Let's see. 24, sorry, I can't see it. 2467. Okay, that one was a little bit faster, 2484. So this ammo seems a little bit hotter. Yeah, that ammo is definitely hotter. So that was 2495. So you're getting, I don't know, an extra 60 feet per second ish, maybe 50 feet per second difference between the 75 grain and 77. So 77 is loaded a little bit hotter. I don't know if that matters. Uh, at distance, it will, but obviously the uh, heavier. 75 grain and 77 grain does not rely on velocity as much as five five, uh, the 55 grain stuff. So if you're shooting someone at distance, you're better off with a heavier grain bullet. Or if you're shooting out of a short barrel, you're better with the heavier grain bullet. Not to say the 55 grain isn't effective out to a certain distance, but we're going to see once I calculate all this, what that distance is. All right, so that's all the ammo I have. Let's do some, you know, nerdy math and then I'll get back to you.